and welcome. I am Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Thank you for joining us for our program today, The Future of Modern Expeditionary Warfare, where we'll be exploring how the U.S. military procures, builds, and deploys critical readiness comp components, particularly through the lens of expeditionary warfare. Big topic. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, the Amphibious Warship Industrial Base Coalition. They are huge. They're in like in every state. It's a big coalition centered around expeditionary uh, capacity in our, in our nation's military. Uh, great power competitors such as China and Russia have increased their military capabilities over the past 20 years, and China's naval growth has begun outpacing the United States. To maintain a competitive edge amid a shifting defense landscape, how are modern Navy and Marine Corps teams preparing for future threats and crisis response operations? How is the Pentagon procuring and designing and deploying the current and next generation of amphibious warships, aircraft, weapons, and sensors? And as the pandemic continues to affect everything from federal budgets to the supply chain, what is the outlook moving forward? We're going to be putting these questions and more in front of our fantastic speakers, but first, a few housekeeping notes. You can tweet us at, at the Hill Events with at the Hill Events using the hashtag the Hill Defense. We're broadcasting live and we'll be taking your questions throughout the program. As with any live stream, you could experience occasional trouble with the video. Refreshing the page should, in most cases, fix the problem. Before we begin today's conversations, I'm pleased to welcome for brief remarks Captain David Forster, chairman of our sponsoring organization, the Amphibious Warship Industrial Base Coalition. Captain Forster, welcome. Good afternoon, attendees. I'm David Forster, chairman of the Amphibious Warship Industrial Base Coalition, or AWIBC. We represent more than 750 companies in 43 states and over 240 congressional districts, delivering nearly $2 billion worth of parts and services for the construction of amphibious warships. Despite the ongoing pandemic, the men and women at these companies have done an incredible job adjusting and adapting to ensure the continued delivery of these remarkable vessels. As of today, one America-class LHA and three LPD Flight 1 and Flight 2 ships are under construction. Maintaining a stable production schedule is essential to our security and our national and local economies in terms of employment numbers. In fact, 61% of AMFIB suppliers we surveyed said that these kinds of shipbuilding contracts help save jobs at their companies during the pandemic. 91% said multi-ship purchases are important to the health and future of their companies, many of which are critical due to the vital role they play in maintaining our national security. And hot production lines not only help maintain a skilled labor force, they also maximize cost savings for taxpayers. The future is bright for amphibious warships, just ask the Marine Corps. They understand better than anyone why the amphibious warship has been called the Swiss Army knife of the fleet. No other type of ship can deliver the type of survivability, lethality, and mission flexibility that an amphib can. And in today's geopolitical environment, that kind of flexibility is absolutely critical. According to Advantage at Sea, the Tri-Service Maritime Strategy released in December of 2020, America-class amphibious warships add a crucial element of unpredictability to expeditionary strike groups. They give our naval forces the ability to operate and maneuver all over the world with added flexibility and lethality. Large deck amphibs, such as America-class LHAs, are key contributors to the execution of our national defense strategy, thanks to their highly agile and powerful embarked Marine Corps air ground task forces. And San Antonio-class LPDs are the perfect platform to provide more bang for the buck. These ships have a tremendous margin for space, weight, power, and cooling that allow for additional technologies, including radar upgrades, vertical launch, and unmanned systems. That could be a real game changer and would give operational planners an important new tool to work with. Amphibious warships are often the ideal and first asset in any crisis situation. Their potent mix of warfighting capabilities makes them a vital part of any expeditionary force or battle group. Their airlift and medical capabilities make them the ultimate first responder to humanitarian crises around the world. And their inherent survivability and resilience make amphibs capable of operating in contested maritime spaces, facilitating sea control and power projection, or executing distributed maritime operations. Amphibious warships deploy all over the globe, and when they do, they send an unmistakable message to our allies and adversaries alike. From USS Wasp and USS Kearsarge, providing hurricane relief to the people of Puerto Rico, 
to USS Macon Island, supporting airstrikes as part of the U.S. Fifth Fleet. Amphibious ships continue to prove their value every day. And that's why it's so important that we do everything possible to ensure the production stability and viability of these ships. AWIBC asked the Navy and Marine Corps to quickly expedite the bundled procurement of LHA-9 and LPDs 32 and 33, instead of treating each one of these as a standalone purchase. If they do, hundreds of millions of dollars will be saved. We also call on Congress to support better, faster, and more affordable amphibious warships for the fleet our nation needs today. Therefore, I urge you to contact your congressional representatives today to let them know you firmly support amphibious warship development. Thanks for listening. Now let's have a great event.